Have you ever felt that something is holding you back? Like sometimes our own thoughts and beliefs become visible barriers that stop us from reaching our full potential. I actively work to keep myself grounded and focused so I can stay calm. I recently started reading this book from Brianna Wist, or Brianna Wist, 101 essays that will change your life, change the way you think. And there is a chapter about ideas and beliefs that hold people back in your lives. So I wanted to share my own, thought, my own thoughts about this chapter and what are my own beliefs that I actively work to keep myself um, advancing. Maybe you can resonate with some of them. The first one is that you are the exception. I think many people believe that. Many people think, okay, I don't have to eat healthy, I don't have to wear sunscreen, I don't have to exercise so often, I can drink, I can smoke, I'm just gonna be the exception and I won't suffer from maybe a health problems or in the future, or if you don't put the hard work enough, you, you're just gonna get all the things in life without doing what you have to do because you're just the exception. And maybe you're not consciously thinking, you, oh, I'm the exception about that, but you just think that things don't happen to you. The reality is that that's not true. Bad things and can happen to you and you're not special. You're not different from any other person that will suffer and will go through the same consequences and same problems that you face very often. So one way that you can, f that I myself put myself in the right direction is that I remind myself that I'm just not more special than anyone else. And for this reason, I need to do the work. I just need to do the work because no one is gonna give it to me. I'm not an exception. And I also need to take all the precautions to take care of myself and my future and whatever, because I'm not gonna be just protected from any bad consequences. And happen to many people, they don't plan themselves. They think bad things will not happen to them or they can just do whatever they want and they do happen and put you back in life. Another idea is that busyness equal importance or to be busy. In the modern world, many people think, oh, if I'm busy, I'm just very important and always have something to do and I don't have time for other things. The reality is that many successful people do find time to do many of the things they want to do. They find time for their family, for their jobs, for their hobbies, for their projects, or even for volunteering because it's not about being busy or having so much to do, it's about managing the stress, being smart, and managing your time correctly. So if you think you don't have time to do maybe exercise, to take the hobby you want, or to find time to find a job, a new job because you don't like the one you have, because you're so busy, probably you're not. Probably you're just having problems in managing the stress and managing your time, and this is something you will have to deal with. Another one is there's a right time for everything. And I'm guilty about that. Many times I just thought, okay, this is not the right time to do this, take this action, talk to someone or start a specific project or put the effort in a specific hobby. That's not true. Well, yes, there are some times that it might not be the right time, but many, the majority of times, there's no right time for anything you just put this excuse or this obstacle to yourself to say, not right now, I will do it later, I will have a better occasion, a better opportunity, and then I could be able to do, insert whatever activity or object you wanna acquire, whatever you wanna do, or whatever change you wanna do in your life, later in your life. This is just an excuse for procrastination. And there's another caveat here. I mean, I thought about very deeply about it and it's about maybe it's true it's not the right time but it's not the right time because you're putting yourself constantly in situations when it's not the right time just maybe an extreme example you meet someone you like and you match have chemistry you think you could build something with this person but maybe you are leaving the city you are leaving the country or maybe the other person is leaving and low chances you will meet again in the same city. And of course, this is very sad. <laughs> Maybe happens to many of us. But the thing here is that 
I know some people that are constantly, for example, moving around, they're always taking, okay, I want to live here, live there, live there, live there, here. And they, of course, meet a lot of people, but at the same time, they cannot build strong relationships because, you know, if you are constantly moving, it's probably not the right time to build a relationship. And this is just an extreme example for, for this, but maybe in other situations you're doing the same thing, maybe with your job, maybe with hobbies, you're putting yourself in situations where it's never the right time and you need to identify this in your own life. Another one that's very clear is that maybe you had some embarrassing moments in the past and you think everyone will remember or everyone knows about it. Maybe it's happened in a different city, a different country or 10 years ago and you feel you really think people are actively thinking about it and that prevents you from doing stuff you want to do from being completely yourself because you believe people will care or remember that and the reality is that first you don't have to care what other people think about it if you didn't do anything wrong or you regret it or you learned about it then it's okay most likely no one remembers and if they do most likely they don't care about it and are you really thinking about what other people did? Some embarrassing moment from someone 10 years ago? Most likely not. So they're probably also just caring about themselves like you do every day. So stop letting you this hold you back in your own life. Keeping with this is that you are your own struggles. And this is something many people take over. It's a victimhood mentality. So maybe they have a problem maybe they have a disease, maybe they feel they've been discriminated, maybe they feel they had a hard in life because of their family, maybe their gender, their race, their sexual orientation, nationality, whatever, 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 and they identify with this problem. And of course, everyone had different paths in life, someone had a harder path, but if you identify with your problems, this is just going to be you. And you're identifying on the negative part of yourself. You should identify on all the positive aspects of what you can do and what you have done and what you want to change in your life instead of always connecting with all the harder parts or the struggles that you've been facing in your own life. Yeah, this one is very, I think, common for a lot of people and they don't even realize it. And it's all about romanticism romanticism and this is wanting something very badly means you deserve it and the reality is not true and many people think is the more you want it the more you deserve it or the more higher the chance that you will have it and a clear example for this is when people are hardly and oh it's a thunder deeply in love with someone and they think okay if I, I'm the person I love the most this person I should have it and yeah no that's not the way it works and of course why would that be you, you have to provide some value something for people to like you to to get together with someone it's not just about wanting something it's about what you can also provide this is the reality if not then no one will ever achieve anything because you just want it but you're not giving doing or doing anything that's the way life works and that's why we can advance as a society and you really need to be put clear in your mind and think deeply, deeply about it that it's not just about what wanting it, but it's about doing and providing value. So stop thinking just because you really want something and that you deserve it because you don't. You don't deserve anything. You need to put the effort, you need to provide value and then people will pay back and then you will start getting things done. At least for me, I always actively think, okay, if I want something or I want to do something specifically, it's not just because I want it, but I need to provide some value. And it's not about how much, I, how, how hard I wanted it, it's how much I can provide. And I think it's a better mentality. But let me know what you think. One of my favorites, and I think I learned this very early in my life, since really young, is that not to avoid physical pain. And for me, this is my motto in life, I think, and this is not like masochism or hurting yourself, don't get me wrong, is that having physical pain will prevent you from having emotional pain. You have to choose. I mean, I would prefer to have physical pain than emotional pain every day, like most people will do. And most physical pain will be temporary. And it's something you can deal and maybe it's not even bother you. 
and not thinking about hurting yourself, don't get me wrong, but rather it's about things that might hurt you or might not hurt you, might feel uncomfortable, might hurt in the way like muscles or whatever, are not necessarily bad for you. I mean, common example, of course, sports, if you work hard, you won't suffer about it. You will get gains from it. This is clear. I think everyone can relate about that. Sometimes you feel nervous, maybe, and you might do or consume things that you know in the long run will hurt you more. Instead of that, you have to embrace this being uncomfortable. Maybe a little bit of physical pain, this feeling when you know you things are happening around and you feel it. But you embrace it and you don't avoid it because if I'm uncomfortable, you will be preventing yourself from doing things that in the long run will hurt you more. And I think everyone knows what I mean here. So give it a thought. Something else that I just for myself, I think, and maybe disagree is that I think it's most of the times perfectionism is a waste of time. Maybe there are special cases where perfectionism is good. If you are a surgeon, you're a doctor and you have to give a specific dose or you're creating a medicine and you have to give a specific dose, which is very, very perfect, not to harm. Maybe the therapeutic window is very small. Maybe you have to be this perfect or you're building a building. But many other times there's a little bit of room of error or a little bit of room for chaos. And many times people don't, are so afraid of recognizing that or they just cannot see it. Most of the time perfectionism, my opinion, comes from rather being insecure or being OCD, so obsessive compulsive disorder. Because of being insecure, you cannot recognize where being perfection, being perfect or perfectionating everything, it's not really needed. It won't do any change because the, the margins of all the changes you do will not really affect the big picture and no one's going to care. I mean, think about it. And this is also situation by situation, but think about a chef that is putting all the effort for a magnificent plate with all the details and putting a lot of things to give the perfect flavor and the imperfection and takes a lot of time. And then the client is me, which I'm not, I don't care too much about food being really fancy or having so much little details of flavors. I'm, I'm more practical with it. I don't really care. The chef will have lost a lot of time. And with someone else too, but for me not. So you have to identify your situation when you need to be perfect and when you're not. And this scenario, the probably waste so much time in someone like me, which I would have just appreciated just a bigger amount, but like, you know, I don't care about these little details. And that's also what we can do maybe at work, maybe when starting a project, a hobby, we think, or maybe learning a new language, we think we need to be perfect. We think we need to master it before we can actually use it or do something and we we're just wasting time and we're not living life and identify if you're a perfectionist understand that if you're in half like a obsessive compulsive disorder with like order or whatever maybe it's just because you're insecure you never think it's enough maybe because of the past traumas whatever you did was never enough and whatever you do now you will think you're not good enough or people will not appreciate it and that's why you want to do everything perfect, but most of the times no one cares and it's not needed. I think everyone has a lot of ego and we often have the fear of changing our mind, our beliefs and thoughts. We really need to constantly update our thoughts and beliefs in order to progress. And this is for me. If you ask me what I will believe philosophically and politically maybe 10, 15 years ago, Will be very different from what i am today and there's a lot of ego invested in that because many times we don't want to change we thought oh how can i accept i was 10 years wrong and i'm not so you prefer to be 20 years wrong because accepting that you were wrong for 10 years is harder than changing now and progress for the future it's hard it's hard i'm not saying i'm smart i'm perfect with that but if i do recognize it is what is called in economy this sunk cost fallacy just because you invested a lot already doesn't mean you should be investing more because it will not bring you any better for the future. And this is not only for economy, economy and for you know, projects, it's also for your own beliefs. 
And this is really important that you constantly allow yourself to be wrong, to accept that there might be other ideas, beliefs, thoughts you could do, and then change it. And then maybe for the best. I think that certain beliefs I had before, and then they change because of situation, experiences, data, and evidence that prove me wrong, and then I change it, I believe make me happier, I can believe a better and healthier and more meaningful life, at least for myself. So put yourself in that, don't be afraid of being wrong, no one care, and if they care, why do you care? You're doing this for you, you're being a little bit selfish, you're trying to be better, and if someone thinks, oh, you're an idiot because you 10 years ago you believed this and now you believe that, you say, yes, now I changed, good, let's go further, and maybe it helps you. And the last one for today, um, I think, never been a problem for me, but I think this is for many people, and I, I see it, I see it, because it's someone I'm very different in that sense, but I see it with many other people, is that you never have enough friends. And maybe some people will disagree with this, but let me explain. I think many people, depending on the culture, depending on where they live, they are not open to meet more people or more friends. They might be friendly, whatever, but they are not trying to include more people in their lives, just because they think it's too much investment of emotions and time and effort, and they think that just the people they, they know and they have or their partner is enough. Sometimes they're looking for a partner, they're looking for someone that can be their match romantically, can share hobbies, can be their confident, their best friend, they can travel together, they can run together, they can eat the same food, they find attractive and they all want the same back to you. And they look everything one person for the partner. And most of the time it's never like that. You have to identify that for most couples or whatever, that partners will never be their perfect match in all the things they would like their other partner to have. I feel that's also absurd that we look so much in one person for that. Or also with a few friends that we just think, okay, I have a few friends and none of my friends want to take a hiking hobby. Maybe I want to go hiking and none of my friends or my partner want to do it. Mm, I should not take hiking. No, you can always make more people. You can always be open to get more people and get them to new hobbies, adventures, projects, works, jobs, or even relationships, just because you're open. Just because you always try to, every new person you meet, give them the chance to see, okay, I'm open to get to know you better and maybe we could become friends one day. And you will be Chuck, because I always, something here in my, my whole life is, oh, you know many people. I'm not actively going around and talking to people, but everyone I meet, I put my 100%. At least this is in my opinion, my way of living. I put my 100%, I try to get to know them, I try to listen to them, I try to see if we can connect. And if we can connect, maybe there is something we can put together. Does not mean you're gonna invest so much time with everyone? We don't have that, but from the little time you give to someone, you put your 100%, and you will be surprised of how much you can build relationships. That doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be like the way you consider of a friend that you okay, we have a friend that it will be this close, I can share thoughts with this, da, 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 da. maybe it's not like that, maybe just for this person, maybe you just share a specific hobby, everything else is not fun, but this specific hobby, when you do it together, you both enjoy it, the company of each other, and you can do things that you wanted to do, and it doesn't have to be the perfect match, but for a specific little thing, you can get closer. And I think, don't deprive yourself of this, try to get to know more people and be open and be open that the people you already know your partner might not like all the things you want to do or might not want or are capable of being everything you want so maybe just give it a try so yeah these were some of my beliefs or some of the beliefs that were discussed in the book so think about them let me know your opinions in your comments below what do you think that were some thoughts or beliefs that you had or that you're actively trying to work on it, that were holding you from progressing in your life or doing things that you wanted to do. So thank you very much and ciao, ciao.